And welcome back to Mountain Connections, everyone. I'm your host, Nick O'Kane, and I am joined right now by a three-time junior national champion in luge. We have Ashley Farquharson in studio with me. Thank you, Ashley, so much for joining me. Yeah, of course. It's always great to be back here. <laughs> right, of course. And we have seen your progress throughout the last three years. You've won three straight junior national championships. Yeah. Uh, what was that like to you know be so dominant over the last three years? Um, I mean, it was pretty cool. The first one I was like, nice. And the second one I was like, nice. And the third <laughs> one I was like, I got this. <laughs> so, I mean, it was my last year as a junior this year and I just wanted to like put down four clean runs and have a good race and that's what happened. <laughs> now, luge is a very unique sport. I know a lot of people cannot say they've gone out on a luge sled. So <laughs> for you, what got you into you know competing in luge? Uh, it was actually, I my older brother started first, and I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> and right. We actually slid together for like six or seven years, which was pretty fun. Um, but it was um, an after-school program at the middle school, so for like three or four Fridays in a row, they would like pick us up in a van from the school, and we would drive up to the track, and um, it was like a YSA program, so there were all those coaches there, and we just started in curve 12 on a little sled and we had oh, goggles yeah. and elbow pads and he just sent us down. <laughs> and it's funny too because cur curve 12 is like a legendary curve. And yeah. that is like the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. I remember <laughs> covering a bobsled event there and they're like, yep, we got to fall on 12. And I was like, I could not believe it. So from that perspective, what was it like the first time you were able to actually go down on a sled and do a full run uh, for the first time? Um. I mean, there's videos of me getting off my sled at the bottom and just being like, that was amazing. <laughs> just like the <laughs> most ultimate roller coaster ride of all time. Yeah. I mean, if there's anything bad about luge, it would be that roller coasters aren't as fun anymore. <laughs> right. Seriously. And not only this, you could do this by yourself going head first. Feet first. Or feet first. Sorry. Yeah. You're right. Not skeleton. Uh, feet first. And just, it is insane. Now, of course... You just have a huge year winning a national championship. Tell us about this last season that you just had. Um, it was definitely my best season yet. We had a really great team, a really great coaching staff, and everywhere we went, we got um, more training runs before we raced, which was super helpful. And every track we went to, I improved upon my last race result, so I was really happy with that. How much does training at the UOP help with your development? Because I know not a lot of people can say that they have a track right in their <laughs> backyard where they can yeah. practice every day. So what is that like being able to head over to UOP all the time and to get some great runs in? Um, it definitely helped. Luge is kind of an experience-based sport. So like the more runs you get, the more comfortable you'll be on the sled and like the more relaxed you'll run, will, your runs will feel. So that was super helpful because growing up, I mean, when I started, it was like four or five days a week, we'd be up there for two or three hours like right. every day. Seriously. So that definitely helped in like, especially now when I like know what I'm doing, I know my sled, I know how to steer it and everything really well. Yeah, what is that like? Just basically just having your head looking down, holding on for your life, and you're going over 70 miles an hour down the track. <laughs> well, it doesn't really feel that fast when you're in the curve because you like you know what you're doing and you know what's about to happen. But mm -hmm. sometimes you'll come out of a curve and you'll be like, I am going fast. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Or sometimes like... I'll be on the start handles and my timer will start and I'll be like, I have nothing protecting me right now. Right, <laughs> Just like a moment of like <laughs> soberness. <laughs> all I know is I'm terrified of roller coasters, so I don't know if luge would be the sport for me. I love all types of sports, but don't know if it's going to be the one. <laughs> uh, but of course, all of this now is the goal to get to the Olympics and as well as uh, compete on the world championship team. So right now, what are some of the dreams and aspirations that you have for the next couple of years? My dream are... For this next year, I want to qualify for world championships. It's like a tier-based system, so I'll have to place really well in my races. So I really want to do that. Um, but long-term, I want to go to the Olympics. Right, of course. Yeah. Who wouldn't? And the next Olympics, winter, of course, 2022, in Beijing, correct? Yeah. What are the preparations you have right now to try and get there? Um, so this is my first year on the national team. So right now, I'm just kind of learning to work with the coaches and learning the new equipment that I'm getting and just really working on developing as an athlete and developing my strength and skill. And what's good is you have three years to prepare for it. Yeah. <laughs> now, knowing that you have three years, is it just take every day, you know, one step at a time or do you have specific goals that you want to set each year before getting to that final level? Um, I don't know about year by year, but I definitely have goals that I want to set for myself. Like by next season, I want to be able to do this, you know? Yeah. And of course, luge is a very international sport. You see it 
widely on the European side. So how much mm -hmm. are you actually spending in the United States and how much are you traveling <laughs> the world? Um, so most of our summers uh, are spent in spring usually, are spent in the US, whether it's here in Lake Placid, New York, where our other track is. Winter is usually all in Europe. <laughs> right. So sometimes we'll spend a couple weeks here for um, the races on the four Native American tracks. Yep. I mean, North American tracks. Um, but most of the time it's in Europe. They have like three times as many tracks as we do over here. <laughs> Very European dominated sport. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great to see that US is making a strong presence, especially with our, our bobsled team, our skeleton team, our luge team. We're mm -hmm. seeing consistent progress. And I think that all starts with the YSA, getting kids comfortable with new sports uh, and yeah. getting them into an environment where they're not used to. You know, it's not soccer, it's not football, it's yeah. not baseball, <laughs> it's going down a roller coaster going 70 <laughs> miles an hour. Yeah, the YSA was definitely super helpful. I mean, I'm, I like know I volunteered there a lot and they've helped me a lot like financially and I've like spoken for them at events and stuff and they've really always been there for me and my family, which is awesome. I mean. We're so lucky to live in a community like this. Like if I lived yeah. anywhere else, this would not have not happened. <laughs> well, you know, it all starts right here in Park City. So thank you so much for your time and dedication to the sport. And I know we're gonna see you at the higher level very soon, <laughs> and hopefully with an Olympic medal around your neck very soon. <laughs> thank so you. Thank you, Ashley, for coming in. And thank you everyone for tuning into Mountain Connections, but stay tuned because we'll be back after the commercial break.